This conference will now be recorded. Um, this is the first uh, session for the Salesforce development. So I think uh, there are uh, different background people. So I need to consider everyone and explain from very, very basics. Okay, so first I start with what exactly we are going to understand as part of the development. And also we start with the basics and slowly we understand the advanced concepts. Okay, so now in general, the first two priority is for the configuration, the administration concepts, whatever we discuss. Okay, so when the requirement, when there is a requirement from the client, first 100%, we have to try achieving the requirement with the configuration options provided by Salesforce. In worst case, if that is not possible, then only we need to go with the development. So that is the reason someone, people directly inquire about Salesforce development. They want to become as a Salesforce developer. The fact is, in order to work as a Salesforce developer, you should also know the basics of the Salesforce administration. So then in a better way, you can analyze the requirement and decide so whether to achieve the requirement with the configuration or the development okay so now the platform whatever salesforce offering to do the development technically they are calling that as force.com platform okay so on day to day you hear about this right force.com platform so let's say if you want to work with the java Right in our local system, or if you are directly running the application in the one of the website in background, they install the Java software. It creates the Java runtime environment, and on top of that, the of the Java application. Okay, so in the same way here, Salesforce, whatever the development related things, whatever we do in order to execute so there is a platform and so already whenever we register for any client in the server by default they install all the necessary softwares or whatever needed to execute whatever we ex whatever we develop in the directly cloud right? so that platform maybe once you log into salesforce where is platform? We cannot show. It is internal software which is available in the server. Okay. Now on this platform, which kind of development we do? So when I say development, people are asking, should I know Java, C or C++? So no need to know anything for this course. So I'm going to teach from very basics. And also, this platform won't execute any Java or C or C++. Those kind of things are not supported. Okay. With Salesforce, the supported languages, right? So when you see as part of the platform, almost we work with all the layers of the development. Right? So layers in the sense, let's say, when you see one of the application, whatever you see, that is the web page, right? The view, the user interface. So how this user interface is looking like this, we do development. We decide where you want to show which icon, which text, where it should align, what should be the color, all those things, right? So here, Salesforce, we work with the UI layer. Right. what we see when you open any web application so that layer how it should look and all those things we decide okay we work with the ui layer when you interact with the ui in background it executes with right let's say when i when i click on this how it is navigating to here internally there is some logic system execute right 
we are saying i'm saving internally it is trying to save this data into database so so to do that uh, internally there is a logic will be executed right the business logic we also need to do the development in the business logic layer when you interact with the ui in the background so if there is a requirement to execute the hues logic the logic so we have to write so i'll i'll, I'll explain what kind of language we use so business logic also we need to write and also we also need to write the database commands to interact with the database so do you want to read the data from a particular table do you want to insert a record into a table so all those things we do right database commands also to use so we are like a full stack developer we touch UI part of the development, also business logic, and also database. Right? So business logic. Right? So what is the programming language we use? Okay. So here we use one of the programming language called Apex. Okay. So not Java, not C++. Right? So there is a separate language which is specific to Salesforce. And we use this programming language. To know this language, no need to know Java or anything. Okay, I'm going to explain everything from the basics. If you know Java or C++, it's better. It's fine. Okay, so maybe you already you might be knowing some of the concepts because uh, this Apex programming language is based on the OOPS concepts, object-oriented programming concepts. So in market, Java, C++, .NET, all those languages are based on the OOPS concepts. Due to that reason, the syntax, so the way how we write this program will be similar to that, but very lightweight in terms of some of the scenarios, okay? So I can say, I cannot say it is very dead easy. Medium level complexity, and compared to Java or .NET, okay. So Apex is the programming language we use with the Salesforce and the, the platform supports running this Apex business logic, okay. So we'll discuss first. We'll deal with this Apex basics, and then slowly we also understand about the database commands and also the UI development how we deal. So all those things we'll slowly understand. Okay, so with UI layer, right? UI means user interface. So what exactly to use here? So here, some of you maybe, most of you might know about how we develop the web page. One of the famous languages to develop the web page, right? HTML. So HTML, and uh, so when you say there is a page is developed with HTML. Internally, how the styles, right? What should be the color and alignment? So internally, we use styles, cascading styles, CSS, and also JavaScript. Right? The client side logic. That means client side means within the browser, the logic will be executed and it gives the result. So we also use JavaScript. Okay. So not in an in-depth way, high level, at high level. So that's the reason maybe some of you are interested to know basics. Maybe let's say you are from maybe biotechnology or completely different domain, right? So what I recommend, there is a website called W3C Schools. So just uh, get to know, maybe you might also not knowing about full form of HTML, right? Hypertext markup language, how it starts, how it ends. So, but what we call this one, tag. Maybe some of you might not be knowing about that. So maybe just uh, 
So maybe not complete uh, course of HTML. Try to see the some of the basics. Okay. Anyway, we don't use all these things in an in-depth way. Based on the need, we also use some snippet of the HTML. Okay, so you can maybe explore here and understand very basics. Right? So what is full form? How it works? At least basic level, if you know. Again, when I start teaching, easily you can understand. Okay, so but these are not uh, only these things we do. No. In some of the areas, we use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Right? So as part of the platform, whatever the platform is offering to develop the UI. So one of the markup language is called Visual Force. Instead of HTML, we use one of the markup language called Visual Force. Right? So we understand this from basics. And uh, when we deal with this Visual Force, some part of the pages, we also use HTML. So it's like that. Visual Force is one of the in-house Salesforce markup language to develop the web pages. And also, people say like me. Okay, maybe some of you already get to know from your friends or someone, right? So Lightning is also one of the framework to develop the UI. But as part of the Lightning, there are two things. So one is Ara. That is one kind of framework. And uh, the other one is LWC. Okay, Lightning Web Components. That's uh, one of the kind of framework. So this was introduced in 2015. And uh, this was introduced in 2019. So modern maybe framework to develop the web pages. Okay, so these are the things we have. And uh, in case if you want to, if there is a need to work, we need to use all these things to develop the UI and achieve the client requirement. Okay, anyway, so if some of you already attended admin, you know there are many standard screens provided by Salesforce. Right? Mostly we use those standard screens. If the client is having a requirement beyond the standard screens provided by Salesforce, then only we go with the development. Okay, so when you go with development, so so these are the things we touch and work. Okay, that's about the UI layer. Now the business logic already Apex we use. If you know Apex, then we will be good. So first we start with Apex only. This is the bridge between whatever the UI we develop and uh, to interact with the database. The most important thing you should know. This this is the one. Okay, then uh, UI and other things you can understand. So this will never change. You don't see tremendous change in the way how we develop. Right? Maybe version to version they improve the new features, but already whatever you know, it will be always there. When Salesforce started from right from the beginning, from that starting to now. Right, almost 20 years in 2000, Salesforce introduced this. Right, except uh, new features, whatever already you know, it will be same. But this UI, right? So day by day, maybe every five years you see change in the the way what we need to know and enhance our skills. Those things mostly you see in this part of the development. Okay, and the business uh, database commands also same. You will see, uh, you will never see changing and accept some enhancements. So mostly same thing. Once you know, it's always forever. When you when you continue with Salesforce, it will be there, and you can easily um, maintain them. Okay, so now for database, what exactly we use? Maybe here we use SOQL, right? Maybe when you, some of you, if you know about database, SQL, right, uh, is one of the famous query language. 
So here, Salesforce we use SOQL. SOQL means Salesforce Object Query Language. And also we use Salesforce Object Search Language and DML. More about these things going forward when we start that topic that time in detail, I will explain. For now, just I'm listing out what exactly we are going to discuss. So, but with one or two hours discussion, you'll be knowing all kind of queries and how we can perform the DML operations. So that much simple, right? No need to spend more time on understanding this. So this takes more time to understand from basics to all different, different advanced examples. We deal while working with the Apex and the UI also will work for more days. Okay, so and also as part of the business logic. So I'm saying Apex. So Apex is the core. Right? So when we deal with that, people also ask. So do you teach integration? Right. So there is a concept called integration. Most of the times people ask. Okay, so integration, right? We also maybe call as web services, right? People say web services are API. So more about what is web service, what is API, I'll explain when we start the topic. So we also discuss about the integration as part of this development course. So mainly as part of the integration. So why when you think that? those things maybe when we start and explain more okay so here at high level as part of this course what exactly i want to explain as part of the integration so api integration and rest api integration so these are the things we discuss okay so this is very very high level picture right so what exactly we are going to understand as part of this course okay so when you deal with apex you see many many concepts okay when you deal with this you see the number of types of queries so again there are many concepts related to this so just understand and also to make it very clear as part of the ui as part of the dev course completely end to end what we need everything we discuss in detail but this lightning okay only basics as part of this course so maybe i'll take four sessions four to five sessions to understand ara and lws only basic we are going to understand as part of this course if you want in depth again it is like a separate course for our and lws okay so considering the duration the duration for development is two months okay so within the two months only the basics i can cover and uh, so when you start i think uh, up to this is sufficient so once you practice and once you are good so then again if you go with the lightning it will be good okay this is like a uh, advanced uh, kind of topics okay so that's about this what i'm going to explain as part of this course so now i think uh, you might be i mean understanding the high level overview so what exactly we are going to discuss as part of the development course and also so what is happening so i'm saying that I'm starting new batch for sales post development. Uh, some of the candidates are also joining, thinking that this is the starting of the entire sales post course. So maybe if you join like that, the thing is, as part of the sales force, there are two main modules when we um, progress with the course. One is administration. So what we do with the configuration on day to day, those things will be covered as part of the administration training. Later development for developer administration is prerequisite. Um, so if you are if you are already know and still if you are joining, it's good. Some people they are thinking this is the very beginning of the course. The thing is in this time slot, 
already administration training is completed and i'm so starting with the development the reason why i say new batch some of the people already they are working on salesforce as the administrator and already they might be trained on admin somewhere and they want to join for the development okay for them right this will be um the right uh, right beginning of the development okay so maybe already if you know that this is a development still if you are joining yeah it is good so later for sure you should continue with the admin and understand the admin basics okay so that's about the high level overview now let's start with understanding the business logic layer the programming language what we use for apex right apex the programming language i'll say maybe programming language we use and maybe before we start here so for any questions you can ask okay and the full course contents if you want to see so already i think you know my website or whatever the message i shared with you there you can find the link to see the full syllabus you can see that yeah any questions okay so now let's start with this programming language one of the first point so when we start with one of the programming language is it case sensitive or case insensitive that's the first point we should know so apex language is case insensitive right so what is the meaning of apex is case insensitive so what is the meaning of this so let's say right, for our understanding when we write a program if i give like this later if i refer like this maybe if i refer like this everything is treated as same even though there is a change in the capital letter still salesforce treat like salesforce in the sense the apex the syntax treats everything as same but that is case insensitive but when you deal with maybe already you might be knowing about java or other dot net i think those are the case sensitive languages okay but here apex is case insensitive okay so i strongly so so recommend you to understand this point okay so the next thing so first of all what is a program at some of you maybe if you are from biotechnology or mechanical or maybe due to some reason people even they don't know what is a program and how it works okay so now i think someone is asking question can i continue admin later yeah that is possible you can continue with the development and later you can join for admin it's based on the people mindset right that will work but some people still they want to start from admin or if you are very very non technical person then maybe strongly i recommend to start from admin okay so otherwise if you know something okay you have some you are in it or in some other maybe some other technology so i think easily you can grasp okay so now what is a program so maybe to understand the terminology of a program so i want to compare this with day to day right day to day so we deal with english language right we read english we write english for some reason due to some of the needs so let me compare with that okay so i'm opening so now the document here so now if you see here 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 i am trying to compare the programming language with the english and uh, 
compare the terminology so that easily you can grasp okay so in english so if you want to form the sentence right so what we have to do so multiple different words by combining we form a sentence but to form the sentence we have to follow the grammar grammar is nothing but the rules from the english language we have to follow that grammar and combine multiple words together then the meaningful sentence will be formed right in the same way here each and every word what we see technically instead of word we call as token so each english word what you see here we call as token okay programmatically technically we call that as a token instead of word we use token terminology multiple tokens together can form a statement here instead of sentence we call as statement right so here instead of grammar we call as syntax by combining multiple tokens by following a proper syntax we can form the statement in english language how do we end the sentence with full stop each and every sentence will be ended with full stop here in the programming language we end each and every statement with semicolon right so like that so if you compare easily i can i think you can understand in the same way when you combine multiple sentences we can form a paragraph but while forming the paragraph if you don't follow let's say if you don't keep the sentences in a proper order when you read that uh, paragraph you cannot understand right whatever the sentences we keep should be in a proper order then only it will give the proper meaning in the same way when you write the multiple statements we have to follow the flow flow means the order we have to follow the specific order after which statement which statement should execute we have to follow that order and maintain so then only you will see the meaningful result okay so that's the flow okay so here instead of paragraph we call as a program right so we call as a program program consists of multiple tokens right program consists of multiple statements each statement consists of multiple tokens by following the syntax by using tokens we can form the statement okay so just uh, try to compare and uh, understand and also when we deal with english the word can be noun or adjective or verb there are different types in the same way here token the technical terminology token the token can be either a keyword or identifier or operator or literal so when we call as keyword when we call as identifier right all those things uh, when we start writing statements slowly we'll discuss about that okay just uh, first uh, very very if you are very very new i think this will be useful to compare and understand the programming terminology okay this is the terminology now why we write the program what is the purpose of writing the program to automate some of the actions on day to day if you see so nowadays if you want to calculate anything people are immediately opening calculator and doing right in our mobile or in in even so in internet also you can search for calculator and see the website or in our windows or mac os you will see the calculator right so internally there is a program we give some data as input right we enter some data and decide want to add or subtract or divide we supply some instructions we give data and instructions based on that it will apply the logic and gives the result if it is not there we have to do manually 
right so the purpose of the program is to automate to automate what we do on day to day instead of every time everything doing manually automatically the program so with our minimal interaction the program will take care of um, applying the complex logic and giving the result so that's the purpose of the program right when you go to atm we deposit with the draw internally there is a logic whenever you deposit your money will be added to your bank account balance when you withdraw it will be debited so for all those things right internally the program will execute and it will perform those things yeah that's the purpose now let's maybe start writing so that we'll understand to write to understand in a better way i want to explain about the types of statements when we deal with a program okay um so again types of statements even when you write the paragraph right you will see we combine multiple sentences with end right some sentence and one more sentence or with r sometimes you will say if and combine one more sentence right we say compound statements so like that here also so we have maybe in english we call as compound the sentences like that right so here also we have statements and uh, different uh, types of statements based on suppose say so to do calculation we write some kind of statements to keep some conditions we write some kind of statements okay so i'm just trying to classify into different types and explain okay. first uh, to understand types of statements first memory statements first let me list out the types then i'll explain one after other okay so memory statements arithmetic or logical statements and uh, conditional statements looping or uh, say controlling statements input output statements so these are the different uh, types so i'll try to write logic for each and every type and uh, why we use that so that once we know what are the different uh, types of statements finally we combine all those statements and make it as a program and see how we can run that okay that's the plan so now so what is this memory statement what is that memory okay so maybe on day to day to understand easily so all of us i think we are using we have laptop or computer so when we log into our laptop so what we do so we have the hard drive let's say i have um one terabyte hard drive yeah, i store my videos images and pdf documents or other documents right so to store all that it needs memory right so i have one terabyte i can only store one terabyte uh, only up to that much videos or images or whatever beyond that you cannot store if you want to you have to enhance your hard drive memory right the thing is uh, that is also data video and uh, images and uh, documents everything is a data right and also we have ram right ram people say 8 gb ram and 16 gb ram what is the purpose of the ram to hold the runtime applications information if you see in my system i have opened uh, go to meeting i have opened visual studio code one of the text editor i have opened chrome browser many things i have opened so all these applications to run needs some memory right so that will be taken from the ram 
8 GB or 16 GB, whatever you have. Let's say in my computer, I have a game and I want to install a game and play. But in order to play the game, the requirement is having 16 GB RAM, but I have only 8 GB. You cannot run that program because while running that program, it needs 18 GB memory to hold all the all the things to play the game. Okay, so like that, when you write the program, while executing the program, we give some data. So at least temporarily to hold that data, system needs some memory, right? So that memory, how much memory should be allocated? It's not that for all type of data, whatever we deal, it will be allocating the same type of memory. Okay, if we do like that, so data memory waste is. So let's say on day to day, which kind of data we do? For example, number, right? Numbers one, two, three. Maybe when you deal with the amount, we deal with the maybe text, right? Name and all those things. We deal with the true or false. We deal with the dates. So we have different types. Okay. So for each type, same memory system allocates, memory will be wasted, right? So to avoid that, in most of the programming languages, when you see, people say data types. So what is the type of data you are dealing? Based on the type of data, system we have to tell to the system saying, I'm going to deal with date. I'm going to deal with Boolean. Boolean means true or false. Then system will understand and uh, allocate only that much memory. So that memory will be utilized in a proper way. So like that, for that purpose, we need the memory statement. So to write the memory statement, not blindly, so we cannot write. So we should aware of the, what are the data types supported by this programming language and right? programming language to programming language the terminology the way how they expect it right? so that will be different here whatever i'm explaining is purely related to apex programming okay so first let's deal with the data types okay and also clearly maybe later so there are two types of data types, okay? We have primitive data types. We have non-primitive data types. So which types we call as primitive, which types we call as non-primitive, I will explain, okay? For now, just to focus on data types. Anyway, under this, whatever I'm going to list, those are primitives. Maybe after writing few statements, I'll explain what is that primitive type and what is the non-primitive type and difference. Okay. So now as part of the primitive types in Apex, so we have Boolean. Maybe let me follow the order. So we have one of the type blob. Right? So maybe I'll I'm trying to explain in a alphabetical order. Okay. So blob is one of the data type. And uh, if you want the full form, blob means binary large object. Okay, so when we use this data type to store the files, which files it can be a PDF or Word document or text, image, any kind of file you can store. Okay, so to store the files, we use blob one of the data type. Okay. And one more type, Boolean. So when you define Boolean, so that time in the Boolean type of memory, which kind of data we can store? You can store either true or false. Either true value or false value. That's it. That is a Boolean type. The other one, date. Date is one of the type. In general, on day-to-day, -day, we deal with the date. 
and also based on the country the format of the date will be different right so maybe in india we follow first we give day month and the year maybe in some countries they follow first month after that date and after that year right it's all based on the country based on the local based on time zone based on some factors the format will be decided for now just we don't need to bother about that so just to get to know these are the different formats and uh, to store the date we use date time okay the next one date time right so along with the date also we can store the time right for time there is a specified format so when we play with the examples the time you can see okay so both the date plus time can be stored when we deal with the date time data type okay the next one is decimal decimal data type decimal is for a number right so let's say when you deal with the price price of a one of the item maybe 69.50 dollars bank balance right so maybe when we deal with some kind of data we also need the decimal digits right so in those situations we use this it can be like like this right so it can be like let's say gold what is the weight of the gold so 1.2 grams right so for sure they need decimals right otherwise if they ignore decimals it is a loss for the gold company right so in few business scenarios whenever there is a demand to use decimals digits after dot to use digits we use decimal okay um so we have one more type called double double maybe in a right in an easy way to understand you can say large decimal value right so large decimal value you see sometimes you see exponential right for exponential something so when there is a huge number the exponentials and all those things will be added to hold such kind of huge numbers right whose number of decimal so that time we go with double practically mostly we don't use in case there is in it so double is one of the option okay so so next thing is id one of the data type so already if you attended administration if you see when we deal with the standard object or the custom object while inserting the record into a table each record whatever we insert into database will be assigned with a unique record id there are two types of record ids 15 digit record id or 18 digit record id right to hold either 18 or 15 digit record id we use this id data type okay the next one is integer integer is a number without decimal digit let's say when you are counting we say only one two three right we don't say 1.1 1.2 1, 1, 1, 1 2 3 4 let's say when you say quantity we say one or two or ten or hundred so in those situations we don't need decimals right so we need some rounded numbers so for that we use integer okay so to hold the large integer value we have one of the type called log long is for the large integer value to hold huge integer value we use long one of the data type okay very rare okay so mostly we use integer decimal boolean these kind of things okay and the other type 
object. Object is one of the data type. So object, sometimes there is a situation, we don't know what is the type of data we deal. Maybe based on user input, we don't know what we deal. It is a number or it is a boolean or it is a text, we don't know. So in those situations to maintain the data in a generic way, we use object, right? Generic type, which can accept any type of data. Okay, in that situation, we use object type. Next one is string, right? String is nothing but text starting from single character to multiple words and uh, even bigger string you can use right right i can give like this i can give like this i can even type more right multiple lines also i can type right so starting from single character to the big text to hold we use string data type okay and we also have time to store the time right? maybe hours minutes right seconds milliseconds right and also time zone there are many things okay uh, when we deal with that, I think that time you can understand. Okay, so these are the different uh, data types available when we deal with the Apex programming methods. Okay, so now, so all these types we call as primitive types. Primitive data type means, so once we allocate the memory, right? So once we allocate a memory, that memory directly in that memory whatever system allocates whatever the value we assign that will be stored okay that's why we call this as primitive and so we'll say call by value call by value means let's say when i allocate a memory right? let's say one box like that it will maintain and in that so let's say the location of the memory directly in, in that location only our data will store direct our data whatever we input will be stored into that memory whatever it allocates so that is a primitive non primitive when we deal with that i'll explain okay so now with this information i think almost we are ready to write one of the statement right so let me write a statement and understand how it works okay so maybe blindly if i write here and uh, you don't know how it execute so to make it more understandable and interactive so i'm already some of you if you are very new so maybe to have the free salesforce account go to this developer.salesforce.com website okay this is the website here you can sign up Click on sign up, enter your first name, last name, give your valid email address, and uh, job role you can choose anything, whatever, follow all these things. And uh, username should be something at the something.com, whatever you like. So you can give and sign up, you'll get one email to set the password. Maybe wait for five minutes to get the email in case if you did not get immediately. Set the password and log in. And once you log in, for now, maybe in, in future, in detail, I'll explain how we deal. For now, just to execute quickly and uh, show you how the execution happens and works. So I'm quickly opening. Once you log in, you'll see this here icon. You'll see developer console. Open that. So here, this is like a Web based ID. ID means integrated development environment. For our development, what we need, everything, all options you can find here. Okay. So here, 
to write the program quickly and see the results we have debug right debug means to test right how the code is working so you can click on debug you can click on open execute anonymous window here so no need to follow any um, i mean the exact proper uh, program structure and all those things simply we write some statements and execute and see how the statement is behaving and working okay so in the initial phase right for a few sessions so i'll keep on opening this and uh, show you how it works okay so so once you open this now let let's say i want to let's say i want to store one of the person name okay so if you want to store a person name so what is the data what is the type of the data person name is a text right in apex for text we use right string type string and uh, so here string is the data type and we have to give the space right so what are the data type while allocating memory we have to mention what is the type of data we are dealing here i am saying i am dealing with the string type we give string space what is the name for the memory you want to give right so if you don't give name we cannot refer that again and again right so let's say there are two children if we don't give name how they will respond how they recognize that we give some names and recognize the same way there might be a need to allocate one more string memory maybe to store first name last name city country all those are string types allocate memory again and again if you want to refer that and see what is the value you assign that memory should have some name that we give that name here okay so here i am giving the name as first name, right so this name as a developer we decide right we decide as a developer what is this so maybe some other developer might give like this right it's all based on the developer who is working and who is developing the code here we have the flexibility to give whatever you like but there are some rules again like uh, it should not start with the number those things later i'll include so but the syntax data type space the name whatever you want to give for the memory and uh, to end the statement in english we use full stop here we use semicolon right this is one of the memory statement right so when this statement is executed what will happen it will system allocate memory right system make a memory ready to hold some of the text value whatever we are going to enter right so some bytes of memory will be allocated into this one okay so in the same way so let's say you want to store the last name again string last name you can also store the last name okay so when we write the program right we need to follow some standards the programming standards we technically call as indentation okay right from the beginning i strongly recommend you to follow the standards how we know the standards by seeing the example by reading the maybe blogs or the material provided by the documentation provided by salesforce right if someone maybe by seeing right so why people say fresher and uh, experience right we start as a fresher right as soon as year by year we see a lot of other team members code and also inspire from them finally we improve our standards and make better right so follow the standards 
Yeah, so maybe when we study, people say A and B. Here, what I am going to store? You don't know. But if I say, if I give like this, by seeing that, we can understand we are going to store some first name of a person. So do the meaningful name for the variable. So this kind of standards we have to follow. Yeah, any questions? I think, uh, Roja, do you have any questions? If you don't have any questions, please stay on me. If you have questions, you can ask. You know, okay. for intendation, do we have any plugins? Default plugins? Uh, plugin, so when you use the code editors, right? For example, this Visual Studio Code yes. is one of the Here you can find some kind of extractions, plugins. Okay. But as a C, the plugin will do its job, but as a developer, we should also know, right? Even this is not there, and you directly type in some notepad, that time also you have to follow, right? So it won't be much difficult to follow, okay? So I'll write the code in, a, in indentation by following. So I also recommend you to follow that. That's what, okay? From beginning, if you learn like this, you won't struggle, okay? So now here I'm allocating memory for two, right? This is one memory location. This is one memory location. The thing is same type of memory if you are allocating to hold multiple values. We can also do like this. You say first name of the memory, second name of the memory. So maybe here I'm saying memory. So technically, Right, so what we call, I'll explain in a few minutes. Okay, now let's say this is to hold first name and last name. And let's say now I want to store the age of a person. Right, 25, 26, age, I want some rounded age. Right, so if you want some rounded number without any decimal digits, we go with integer type. Integer is the type, space, is right semicolon is the ending of the statement and also if you want to give some default value we can also give like this right so let's say by default i'm giving as 18 right so that is also possible the default values also we can give so this is the uh, one of the type okay so now um, so let's say um, boolean, right? Let's say boolean to represent true or false, right? So is this person is educated or not? Okay, I'm giving is educated, right? If you want to give a default value, by default I'm giving. You can give true or false. Right. If you don't give anything, what will happen? If you don't give anything, if you allocate the memory and if you don't give anything, that might hold null. Null means nothing is there. You allocated memory, but you did not store anything. By default, system holds null. Okay, so like that. So now I'm saying data type and I'm saying name of the memory, but on day-to-day -day people don't say, memory name, memory name like that, right? So now, whatever the code I wrote so far, so all these things, as per this, if you see, everything is a token, right? Everything is a token. Everything is a token, string is a token, boolean is a token, first name is a token, but which one we call as keyword? Again, there are specific type, right? Which one we call as keyword, which one we call as identifier, operator, Right in the above statements, whatever I have written, string, integer, boolean, those are the keywords. Okay, keyword meaning is the token which is provided by 
the platform the programming language will be having the predefined tokens each token will be having a specific meaning those things we call as keywords okay so here when you write the code if you want to keep some statement in the comment use like this okay so slash slash is a the thing is to say that we are writing a comment right we are writing something which should not compile by the system right i'm giving a comment here this time typing in the above set statements keywords string integer and boolean so these are the keywords okay and also uh, the first name right last name i think uh, we are exceeding our time so last name is is executed all these are the identifiers we call all these things as identity files okay so just um, understand that first name last name so and also here equal to is operator the above statement equal to is operator and uh, also 18 right 18 is a letter so maybe here i this side i am saying operator here literals numbers so maybe last name so i'm giving as okay so now in the above example strings we have to enclose in a single code not double code right single code uh, that one we call as string right so like that so maybe since today we don't have time tomorrow i'll progress on this and uh, show you by taking few more examples and also exactly how we need to name and what is the exact naming convention right the indentation we will continue and uh, understand tomorrow to do right uh, continue with data types discussion we'll do this tomorrow and progress so before ending today so any questions anyone so far so like we are learning uh, html now from w3 schools like that we can we learn the apex also no apex i anyway i'm teaching from basics right i recommend you to focus on what i'm teaching okay hmm. so only if you have some interest you can only look into the html javascript and the css okay the other things i teach from basics and uh, all you need to do follow that and uh, try to understand okay okay sir hello sir yeah uh, so uh, so we spoke about that internet internship uh, you posted in the group uh, about that internship three yeah, months so internship uh, so for that you, can we work from home where is the work location if we want to uh, join in that internship we, that you can maybe call me or ping me in whatsapp right okay okay so this maybe not related to that right but this okay. class if you have any questions you can ask that thing okay. just ping me and i'll update okay 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 hello sir hello yeah Sir, what is the DML, sir? Can you please explain what is the full form of DML? Yeah, DML means data manipulation language. So for now, don't worry about the full form, right? When I start my topic, I'll do the full form and I'll also explain how exactly the full form. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay, sir. Why I mentioned just to know the topics. This is like a syllabus at high level. Okay. Okay, sir. Full forms, what is Thank API, all those things. When I start the topic, I'll explain. 
uh, in examples make sure that you understand mm -hmm. sir one more hello sir hello yeah Sir, I'm uh, from IT background, uh, but today is my first class to Salesforce. Can I continue with yeah. development, or you suggest me to attend uh, admin parallelly, sir? Uh, it's up to you. If you have more time, if you think that you can manage attending both in parallel, you can continue for both. Right? So otherwise, okay. uh, the regular way is admin, and after that, develop. Okay, so, sir. But do you think I can follow, sir? I am from mainframe background, actually. Okay, already you are working, or, or no, no. I have a break of four five years, actually. So but I can time, follow all these things. Yeah, full time you are focusing on this training, right? So maybe yes, you sir. can you can join and make sure that spend time. Right? So our development when I teach one hour, at least one hour. Who are watching how to spend additionally to understand that practice. Same thing, the other classes. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. Sure. Thank you. And so, do you provide any material, any text kind of thing to read yeah. afterwards? For demo, what I do, I, whatever the document I am showing, these notes I will share through uh, email. Then after the demo sessions, uh, I keep, uh, I mean, I'll give access to this organization where I develop the code and also I'll share the recordings. Okay, okay sir. Yeah, anyway, okay. I'll share the okay. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, so someone is asking in chat. What is Visual Force? So just uh, wait for that, and uh, right. So when I start the topic in detail, I'll explain. Right. Just take this as a syllabus at high level. Right. So when we start the topic, I'll explain and uh, give examples how exactly the will work. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we are done for today. So okay, we'll continue tomorrow. And this notes and recording, uh, you will get to your email. Check your email and also check your spam folder in case if you don't see in the inbox. So maybe by tomorrow before 12, afternoon before 12, we'll get this. Okay. Thank you.